Hi, this is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to talk about whether it's time to buy REITs. REITs being real estate investment trusts, which are usually stocks that pay a good dividend. If you're interested in dividend investing, Warren Buffett, or just want to see how I'm trading the uh, current financial crisis and bear market, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Now, before the invention of REITs, if you wanted to buy some real estate, you had to buy it in the physical world. You had to buy single family home, an apartment building, commercial real estate. But uh, many years ago, I believe in the 60s, uh, they developed a structure. A structure was developed called a REIT, a real estate investment trust. And what this does is it trades like a stock, but it is a company that owns a bunch of real estate and then it pays out that the income that it makes, the profits it makes from its real estate holdings to investors in the form of a dividend. And one of the ways that REITs are structured, at least in the US, is they are required by law under their structure as a trust to distribute at least 90% of their income to shareholders. So basically you have this flow through thing happening where the company owns a building, let's say it owns a retail location, it collects uh, rent, it pays its expenses, calculates its net income, and then needs to distribute at least 90% of that income to its shareholders uh, as, as dividends. And by doing this, I believe it avoids having to pay any corporate taxes on it, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna look at one that's very popular among investors. I've been getting a lot of questions about this. It's called Realty Income. They've got a great ticker. Their ticker is just O, the letter O. And they've raised their dividend for years and years and years uh, simply because, and for this reason, they are um, part of this elite group called the Dividend Aristocrats, S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats. So this, this is a REIT, and normally REITs will pay dividends every three months, every quarter. This company has done a very good job of branding themselves the monthly dividend company. So very nice for retirees and people who want uh, a little monthly, monthly paycheck in the form of a dividend. So this is a company that did really well. Uh, it survived <clears throat> quite fine during the, uh, the great financial crisis of 2008 to 2009. And they've got a good record of raising their dividend. They basically raise it every, really every couple months. Uh, and certainly every year. And then they, as I said, they pay these dividends on a monthly uh, monthly basis. Now, obviously they have been hit hard by the whole coronavirus thing and the shutdowns and the lockdowns uh, simply because they really specialize in owning a bunch of retail locations. We're gonna talk about what's in their portfolio, uh, but this is always my response when I get someone asking me, "Should is it time to buy REITs? And as we'll see in this in this video, there are many different kinds of REITs. And so you have to really know, it's just like when you buy a car or you buy anything else, you have to know what's under the hood. You have to know exactly what you're getting. And then you can decide whether the price makes sense to you. So Realty Income has this problem. They own a bunch of stores, a bunch of retail locations. And as we all know, retail traffic has basically gone to zero. Store revenue has gone to zero across many, many uh, T different types of stores, maybe grocery stores, accepted. And so what Realty Income has had to do, they just announced uh, yesterday that they will uh, be continuing to pay a monthly dividend. They said it's, it's sacrosanct, uh, which implies that they're not going to cut it. The problem is in order to pay the dividend because their tenants are no longer paying rent or a lot of their tenants are no longer paying rent, they need to borrow money. So they drew down their credit line. This is from April 9th. They withdrew their annual guidance for 2020 simply because they can't project what annual earnings are gonna be until they know the course that this virus is gonna take and government policy is gonna take. So what they're basically doing is they're bor borrowing money uh, from their revolving credit facility. They're basically drawing down their credit, um, drawing down their credit line, using the money to pay uh, using the money to pay dividends to their holders. Now, one thing that's important to do when you're looking at a, riv a, a, a REIT is to take a look at what its uh, FFO is. This is short for funds from operations. And this is the metric that's used to calculate cash flow from all the businesses, from all the rents for a REIT. 
you can't use normal free cash flow. You don't really want to use net income. Uh, but basically, the way you calculate uh, FFO, and I go into this in much more detail in, in one of my courses, which I'll talk about at the end. But basically, you add back all the non-cash charges like depreciation, amortization. And the whole point of calculating FFO or FFO per share is to see whether the company has enough dividend coverage. Because they're paying out, they're basically paying out rent minus expenses, you want to make sure that they're generating enough cash in order to be able to keep paying a dividend. So that's what FFO is. Basically, you take net, net income and you add back a bunch of things uh, like depreciation, amortization, which are really just accounting uh, accounting things. So if we look here, I'm on the uh, the Realty Income website, which I will I will link to. We can see that their revenue has grown uh, nicely over the uh, the past, call it uh, five or six years. Their revenue's gone up. Here's 2019. Here's two, here's 2014. And then here's the most important line, or the two most important lines: adjusted funds from operations. Uh, AFFO and FFO. We don't need to go into the details about the difference between these two things, but then we can we can always we can just compare these two FFO numbers to the dividends paid to common shareholders, and we can see, for example, for 2019, uh, adjusted FF uh, adjusted FFO or FFO was uh, this is a, a billion. Yeah, there are a couple O's, a couple zeros they add to this, so about a billion dollars, and they paid out 852 million in dividends. You can see that you always want this uh, AFFO or FFO to be larger than the dividend payment. What's happening now, there's not a column for this here in 2020, but basically their funds from operations presumably have fallen off a cliff. And this is this is why they need to draw down their credit line, borrow money in order to pay the dividend. So then the question becomes, is this just a temporary blip? What do normalized earnings look like for this company? Uh, do 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 the the rent payments resume fairly soon before they need to really borrow a lot of money, or is there a chance that there's been some permanent damage to their holdings, in that their their stores, where they are the uh, uh, their stores that they lease, where uh, the 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 company's going to file for bankruptcy. Or, or just close its doors and not come back simply because, and this is the really big question, is how much consumer, uh, consumer habits, consumer preferences will change in the wake of this uh, shutdown. Do people maybe move much more to buying online? They get used to, uh, they get used to sort of living in the quarantine style and they, they decide they actually like it. They much rather order online rather than going to these physical stores, etc. And so in order to analyze this company going forward, you have to have a good sense of what its normalized FFO, funds from operations, is going to look like for 2020 and more importantly for the coming decade. Or, or you have to ask yourself, has there been some permanent impairment? Are some of these tenants going away and never coming back? So it's nice uh, if you look at the website, I'll link to this, they list their top 20 tenants here, Realty Income does. You can see their top one is Walgreens. Walgreens, uh, as I understand it, they don't make money selling uh, Kleenex or, or toothpaste. They really make most of their money from their pharmacy business. But you can see that this comprises 6.1% uh, of realty incomes revenue. So these are the biggest tenants, Walgreens, 7-Eleven, Dollar General, FedEx. FedEx I'd be a little bit worried about simply because uh, Amazon is, is eating their lunch. You would think that Dollar General, Dollar Tree, these sort of uh, more low-end retailers would do well in a recession or in a time when um, when times are hard. On the other hand, in most parts of the U.S., at least, you probably can't even go to these stores. And the question remains, how how long will that that go on? So even stores that are, have kind of a good niche, uh, they may not they may not open, and or and or consumer behavior may be different when they when they reopen. You can see that just looking at these two dollar uh, sort of discount stores. Dollar General is 4.4 percent. Uh, dollar Tree slash Family Dollar is 3.5 percent. So just there, you have call it 7.9 percent of their revenue. If something happens to one of these, if something happens to FedEx, they take a really big drop in revenue. And then as we continue down, LA Fitness, uh, I believe, is a privately traded company now. 
do consumers perhaps change their behavior there? Do they decide that they don't really want to go to dirty gyms where they can get pick up uh, viruses on the equipment? Instead, they buy their own Peloton at home or their own um, their own stack of weights. And uh, so that would be LA Fitness. And then I'm really going to drill down here on on AMC theaters. Three percent of realty incomes uh, revenue from uh, from uh, from rent. Uh, or rental revenue, it just came out that AMC is likely going to file for bankruptcy. Uh, movie theater business has obviously been in a long-term decline, though it has had a little bit of a bounce in 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 uh, the last few years. But people much rather just watch from home, and especially during a quarantine, you actually have to watch at home. And so it looks like AMC Theaters is going to file for bankruptcy. Uh, it is almost certain that they will not be making their rent payments. That's one reason you file for bankruptcy or corporate bankruptcy is it allows you to get out of leases, etc. So we can assume that this this revenue completely goes away. This 3% completely goes away. Regal cinema, Cinemas, uh, another 3%, 2.9%, probably in trouble. Um, Walmart will still be okay. Lifetime Fitness, sort of the same problem as, as LA Fitness. You have to have an opinion on that. And so we have this this company that's been quite well run and seems to have sort of this flawless business model where they aggregate stores and commercial real estate, they collect rents, they pay it out to to investors, and they've got this really good branding among retirees and people who want monthly income. But the problem here is that we just don't have good visibility among their, and you can imagine these are the top 20 tenants, but as I understand it, they also have lots of really small tenants or fairly small tenants, at least compared to these big these big companies you can imagine a lot of their mom and pop tenants just don't make it through this unfortunately the airlines Boeing uh, probably get some form of bailout but uh, but mom and pop is going to be uh, the, they don't have the lobbyists they don't seem have the same influence in government and so there's gonna be quite a bit of carnage here so what I my my uh, conclusion with this is that it's just I, I would put it in the too hard category. Here's a great, um, here's a great uh, uh, blog post that talks about a documentary with Warren Buffett, and it's a little hard to see in this picture, but he actually has a box on his desk uh, or a little container, and it says on it, it says too hard, and he's famous for saying that, uh, you know, just some investments, it's just too difficult to decide, and so he puts them in the too hard pile. He all, Buffett's also famous for saying, I much rather. I much rather um, something like I much rather step over a two-foot fence than try to try to climb a wall. And so I would personally, uh, not knowing a huge amount about their tenants and not being really willing to do the work to dig to dig down, uh, I would put this in the too hard pile. And they they do still pay a uh, a good dividend if they're able to maintain it, but there are limits to how much they can borrow uh, to continue to pay their dividend. And and once you once you draw down a credit line, at some point presumably you have to um, you have to repay it. And so future rents, when when and if these stores open back up, will go to uh, um, paying back down the credit line and things like that. Now it would seem that the market also thinks that this belongs in the too hard pile. So here's a chart of O realty income, and we can see it's got this sort of um, the same shape where we've got the crash. We've got the bounce, and then today we may be rolling back over again. It looks very similar to the S&P 500. Uh, S&P 500 rallied a little bit more, but they bottomed at about the same time, around the uh, third week of March. And so you can see that these these stocks are correlated; they're moving with the market. And if you look at if you compare these two charts, it would it would appear that realty income is actually, in spite of its really nice dividend fat dividend yield of four or five percent, it is actually um, underperforming the S&P 500, which is not a good sign. It may be people are mispricing this, uh, but it may be just that people are beginning to understand that this company is going to take a hit. They might even have to cut their dividend. So the dividend yield that you see is not what you get. And so the one problem in this market is when everything's moving together, you don't you don't really get any diversification. You might as well just buy the S&P 500 if you're bullish on stocks or short it if you're bearish on stocks. Realty income does provide a much higher dividend yield, but it's unclear whether that dividend will continue. 
Now to conclude, I wanted to talk about two different kinds of REITs. REITs are obviously a very big basket. The kind of classic REIT is co the commercial real estate REIT, like Realty Income, uh, ticker O, as we've, we've spoken about. I also get a lot of questions about the mortgage REITs. Now mortgage REITs are a completely different business. What these companies do is they don't actually own physical uh, locations. Instead, they buy or originate mortgages and they hold them on their books and they collect income from them. And they finance these mortgages by borrowing money. So they're almost like uh, they're almost like miniature banks or hedge funds where they borrow money at, they try to borrow money at low interest rates, buy mortgages at higher interest rates, and then pocket that spread. The problem is there's a lot of things that can go wrong with this. There's credit risk. Uh, there is uh, the risk of people refinancing their mortgages. So when you refinance your mortgage, your old mortgage gets paid off and uh, the, the mortgage REIT, if it's holding it, will, will end up just getting cash. And so it, it will then need to go back out and find uh, a new mortgage to replace it. And if mortgage rates have fallen, they will not be able to replace it at as high of an interest rate. And so they're basically playing the spread between low rates and higher rates, low short-term rates, uh, low short-term borrowing costs and higher uh, mortgage rates. But then there's there's the risk of prepayment. There's also credit risk. If a lot of people, for example, right now, obviously people are not uh, paying their mortgages or able to pay their mortgages. There have been some government extensions. You can see that classic mortgage REITs like Annaly, NLY, completely gone off a cliff. Uh, Yahoo Finance still has them paying a 16% uh, dividend yield. This is not real. This will go away, uh, certainly. And uh, what's another one? Oh, uh, New Residential Investment Corp is another really big one. Uh, NRZ is the ticker. And we can see this is another stock that has just completely gotten hammered. I'm not sure whether it's because of uh, credit risk or mortgage prepayments, etc. Or maybe they just, uh, the problem with these mortgage REITs is they're highly, highly leveraged, just like banks. And so if there's if anything goes wrong, it's very easy for them to blow up. And you can see how this stock has just really gone off a cliff along with annually management. So I don't like mortgage REITs, but I do want to talk about uh, a type of REIT that I do like, which is the uh, the cell tower REITs. And as it, as it would sound like, uh, cell tower REITs, they basically buy cell towers, uh, they get paid for running them, and then they distribute those earnings to, uh, to shareholders. The really big one is American Tower, AMT. And uh, this is, this is just a great business to be in, obviously, even during a pandemic or during a lockdown or quarantine because people are still uh, using their cell phones and still connecting to cell phone towers. Maybe they're using Wi-Fi a little bit more because they're not driving around. But this is the kind of company that still does really well. Now, as opposed to Annaly, the mortgage REIT we saw was pricing in a 16% dividend yield, which, which basically says there's going to be a giant dividend uh, cut and maybe they'll eliminate their dividend completely. And again, a, a REIT pays out 90% of its net income. If it has a loss, there's no, there's obviously no uh, payout. So AMT is in a much, uh, it's a much easier business in terms of forward visibility. We, we can tell that even during these, these bad times, during this lockdown, they will continue to generate uh, to generate net, in, net income and be able to make their dividend payments. And if we look at a chart of, of AMT, we can see that the market understands this as well. In fact, it was actually just two days ago, it was trading at all time, uh, all time new highs. And so the time to pick up one of these REITs is during a liquidity crisis, during the first stage. And I wish I'd been paying attention to this. This would have been a great buy a couple weeks ago, simply because when there's a li liquidity crisis, as we saw in the first quarter of 2020, people dump everything they're holding. They sell their stocks, they sell their Bitcoin, they sell, sell their gold, they even sell their, their US treasuries, which is a very uh, risk safe or risk free investment, just to raise cash because of hedge fund redemptions, mutual fund redemptions, or just people are panicking and trying to set up a cash uh, buffer for the coming months. And so AMT got caught up in this sell off. Uh, these sell-offs often happen as well simply because the ETF that contains all these REITs gets dumped. People don't really pay attention to what's inside of it, and so they end up implicitly selling AMT even though it might be grouped with 
uh, some companies that aren't going to do as well within the index or ETF and AMT suffers even though its underlying business has not been compromised at all. So the time to buy a REIT like this, you can see right now it's got a, a dividend yield of just 1.55%, not very exciting, uh, PE ratio of 57. You don't really look at PE ratios that much for REITs. It's um, much more common, as we said, to look at FFO and compare it to the, to the dividend. But this is the kind of stock that you want to have on your watch list. I should have had it. And when you get a liquidity crisis where people are just selling everything in sight, it can give you a really good opportunity to pick up one of these at a higher dividend yield. And I don't think the dividend yield got that high on this. Maybe it got to about 3 or 4%, probably closer to 3%, just eyeballing it. But then you get the capital appreciation as it normalizes. So again, with REITs, it's very important to know what they own. Do they own commercial real estate? Do they own mortgages? Do they own data centers? Data centers would be a pretty good business, I would imagine, still, because we're all online. Uh, or do they own something like cell phone towers, like American Tower, AMT? Now, if you found this helpful, I go into a lot more about real estate investing in one of my courses uh, online uh, at, at Trader University Premium, Real Estate Investing Made Easy. I've got a couple uh, a couple good lectures on REITs, uh, e-REITs, as well as um, uh, FFO and just how to think about REITs. So that's something that might interest you guys, as well as all my other courses on there. Swing Trading with Options, uh, Bear Market Trading Strategies is a really good one right now as well as financial statement analysis made easy if you want to learn how to read financial statements like Warren Buffett. If you're interested in options or futures, I also have you covered there, as well as my flagship course, Learn to Trade Stocks Like a Pro. So if you're stuck at home and you want to use this time productively rather than just uh, binging on Netflix 12 hours a day, I uh, might want to check these out, especially if you like my teaching style and really want to use this time to drill down and get better at understanding how the stock market works. So if this is something that interests you, monthly subscription, 30-day subscription gets you unlimited access to all these courses. They're no long-term contracts. You can sign up for 30 days, watch all the courses, and cancel uh, before uh, 30 days are up, and you, you won't be charged again. So if this interests you, just click in the description notes below. I'll have, a, I'll have a link down there. It'll take you to this page. You can click inside of each of these courses and see the curriculum, see the list of lectures. And if you're still interested, you can click Get It Now right here, which will take you to this checkout page. Now, normally, monthly tuition, 30-day tuition, is just $125, gets you access to all of the courses. Uh, but I want to give you guys a discount code, a coupon code, because we are in a recession. And so if you type in, uh, go to this box down here where it says Got a Coupon Code, type in YT, as in YouTube, 99, click Update, and it'll take $26 off. So you can get access to all the courses for just $99 for 30 days access. Again, no long-term contracts, and you can cancel uh, cancel at any time, watch all the courses cancel, and you won't be charged again. Hope you guys found this interesting. If you have any questions, comments, uh, be sure to drop them in the uh, comment section below and hit that subscribe and like button if you found this video helpful. Hope you're all staying well and doing well, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.